Essential PLC Programming Tutorial For Students, Beginners, and Refreshers With Live Examples Extra Session 1 Your attention please Your attention please Your attention please Please select your subtitle for this video Welcome to our DIY channel. This is Nico Tess at your service. At the end of this session, we should be able to first know how to terminate field devices to PLC input and output modules. Second, types of input and output modules. Third, best PLC wiring practices and last but not the least live examples recalling from part one we know that the three major elements of the PLC are the input the CPU and the output an input module detects the signal status of the input field devices. A central processing unit handles signals from the input module and updates the status of the output module based on its program. An output module controls devices such as relays, motor starters, lights, and etc. But how do we terminate those field devices to the input and output module? Like any other electrical circuit, there must be a closed path from L1 to L2 AC supply or V plus to V minus DC supply and the potential difference must occur between them. Here is an example of a PLC connection between field devices and PLC input module. Here is an example of a PLC connection between field devices and PLC output module. There are three types of input and output modules, and they are, Relay Type, Sync, and Source. Relay Type Relay Type has no polarity since it is a mechanical type. You can wire either an AC or DC circuit. But like any electromechanical type, like solenoid relays, it is slower and prone to mechanical drift. Sync and Source Type Sync and Source are transistor types. They are faster, but, 
they only cater DC circuit. Since it's in DC circuit, polarity in wiring is very important and must be given an attention. Sync type has a common of negative, while the source type has positive. Please take note that COM is a short word for common. COM can be seen at the internal side of PLC, input and output. If your common is positive, then your input must be negative, vice versa. This is considered mostly in DC. Example of PLC termination. Consider the blue wiring as negative, and the yellow wiring as positive. At the input and output side, the polarity of the common are both negative. So they are called a sync type. Here is the complete PLC wiring diagram and device connection. Another example of PLC controller wiring is with a proximity sensor. Proximity sensors are DC circuit devices used for detecting metal and or non-metallic material. It can also measure limited and short distances. There are several kinds of proximity sensors such as inductive, capacitive, magnetism and light. Among the different technologies of proximity sensors, there are three types of wiring output, and they are NPN, PNP, and analog output. Here are their symbols for PNP, and this is for NPN. Take note, both NPN and PNP are on and off. Therefore, they are considered as digital input devices. And last, the analog output of 4 to 20 milliamp or 0 to 10 DC voltage. And now, how do we connect the PNP and NPN to the PLC's input module? Have you experienced this? Oh no! There is so much dirt. Worry not. Introducing Ecosphere UV Purifier Water. Certified quality product. Tips on how to wire PNP and NPN sensors. We start with PNP sensor. This is how I interpret the abbreviation of PNP sensor. The first letter is the source supply, which is P for positive. The second letter is the PLC common and has a letter of N, which stands for negative. And the third letter, is the polarity of the sensor output, which is a positive. Usually the symbol is only displayed on the sensor, and the wiring output type is not stated. However, we can still identify the type of, wiring output of the sensor, if we know how to interpret the symbol. BN, is short for color brown, and this is the positive. BL is the black wire, which is the output, and BU is the color blue, which is the negative. To determine the kind of wiring output, you need to look for the load and check what polarity is it terminated to. If your load 
is terminated at negative side, then its output must be positive. Using a PNP sensor will make your PLC input module a sync type. Now we take a look at NPN sensor. Again, the first letter is the supply source of the sensor, which is now a negative. The second letter is P, and so, the PLC common, is a positive. And the output of the sensor is N, a negative. To interpret the symbol, the color coding of the sensor wirings are the same as the PNP sensor. Focusing at the load on the symbol, it is terminated at the positive end, and so, the sensor output, is a negative. And your PLC common should be positive. NPN proximity sensor has a source type of PLC input module. This is an example of the PLC wiring diagram, with a PNP sensor. The common of the PLC has a negative polarity, therefore The common of the PLC has a negative polarity, therefore the PLC input type is a sink. Input and output installation is perhaps the biggest and most critical job when installing a PLC. The following are recommended procedures for input and output wiring. First, remove the power to the input and output modules, or rack. Use lockout and tag out. Second, check the input and output modules if they're in the right slot, and with respect to the wiring diagram. Third, loosen all terminal screws for both the input and output modules. Fourth, wiring considerations. Under wiring consideration, first, you need to consider what type of PLC input and output module then identify its polarity second check also the wire gauge size so you would know its maximum opacity and also to avoid loose thread at the PLC termination third labeling of wires and termination and using color coding are important for identification especially during troubleshooting and tracing it is best to use shrink tubing or tape. The wires that will be connected to a single module must be bundled, generally using a tie wrap, and then routed through the duct, with other bundles of wire with the same signal characteristics. Input, power, and output bundles carrying the same type of signals, should be kept in separate ducts when possible, to avoid interference. Having a separate power supply will prevent direct damage to the PLC, when overloading occurs. We know, later on, modification, and, add-ons, can occur in a control panel. So having a separate power supply can give you more flexibility for any changes. Ground loops are a major cause of noise, hum, and interference, in audio, video, and computer systems. So avoid ground loops when using shielded cable. 
connect only one end to the ground preferably at the rack chassis. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned from this. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Have a great day.